Hi everybody, Coach Jorge Capistani here with the Hope College Tennis Academy and this is video number three in our five part series of what we do at the Tennis Academy. And today we're going to be talking about Wednesdays, the theme on Wednesdays at the Academy and what we do. So Wednesdays the theme is specialty shots or I like to call them sabotage skills. So sabotage is just the ability to lower your uh, opponent's uh, skill level. So here's what we find at the Academy. When people compete a lot of times, if they're ahead, we want them just to keep up with plan A and don't change a thing. But if they're behind, which is, happens a fair amount, um, you don't want to be stuck with your only option trying to play better because it's not that easy to play better. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll, we'll deal with four specific sabotage skills. But first I'm going to show you a little bit of like the pre-work and what we're trying to teach the kids. So uh, we're going to show this on the court, but we're really not using this court. <clears throat> this is going to represent player A and this is player B. And this is the level they're playing at, okay? So he's playing at a little bit higher level right here than this guy. So right now, if you're player B and you're, maybe you're down 4-1 or 2-5 in the first set, and you feel this is your, your case, you're player B here, and what are we gonna do with player B? Well, what's typical and what's frustrating for the kids is their only option for the most part, the only thing they can even think of is to raise their own level. So they're gonna say, I have to do this. I got to get my level and raise it up above this guy's level, uh, which sounds great on paper, but it's really quite difficult to do. Uh, and no one really typically starts the match and says, I'm going to come out and go 80%. And then if I need to, you know, I'll ramp it up and try harder. So we got to try to get kids to really not think about that as an option. There's a better option. And that option would be to do this. Um, <clears throat> I pick up my eraser. So rather than try to worry about bringing him up, what if I could do some things, um, some tactics that is, that would make my opponent come down? So what if I could get this guy's level to start plummeting down to here? So how, how do I do that? How do I make that happen where I can get that, that kind of thing going? Because either way, I'm fine. I'm still above his level. I have a chance to win. The other way, I had to raise my level. So. The, the result is the same. I'm going to get myself playing at a higher level. The, the trick is how do you do that? So here's four tactics that we try to teach the kids. So uh, I'm going to list them up here for you. So these would be the classic sabotage tactics. And number one is going to be to be able to deliver slice. So slice is one in the family of sabotage. It's one of the key things that people don't like to receive. I never had a kid in my 30 years plus of coaching, come off a court all excited about, oh my gosh, I played great, I played this slicer, he just chopped me to death and I played awesome. So obviously, if people don't like it, then there might be something we want to be able to deliver. So slice is one. The another one is drop shots. And this one is a little bit of a personal pet peeve of mine because I know that the way the game has evolved is that almost 100% of our opponents, particularly if you're playing junior tennis, are going to be a baseline player. They're going to be something, some kind of type of baseline player. So there might be a steady baseliner, an aggressive baseliner, a moonball baseliner, a runner, a retriever. But 99, or if not 100% of your opponents are going to prefer to play at the baseline. So if you can add a drop shot, boom, you can really make people play quite a bit worse. The next one, number three in the sabotage, is moon balls. This means that you have the ability to start throwing up balls changing the pace, giving him nothing to work on, making the point of contact constantly out of his strike zone. And that's a very, very powerful way to sabotage people. And then the last one I'm going to call serve accuracy. Uh, serve accuracy is totally misunderstood. And, and here's why. I'm going to share some statistics with you. Uh, and this is not my numbers, it's from the USTA. So if you, if you ask most players what shot they prefer, 70% of the players say they like forehands better. 25 claim to like the backhand better. That leaves only 5% saying that they are completely even. Okay? So the way I look at that is if you're a junior player and you're going to play 100 high school matches, 95 times out of 100, the opponent is going to have a weaker side. You know, so for example, they might have a, an A forehand, a really sweet A level forehand, and maybe a B or even a C backhand. Well, I can really play two different people. If I'm not smart about this and I serve just anywhere, this guy is going to take his A forehand. I'm playing an A player that day. But if I can always start to point to the weaker side, now I'm playing a C player. 
So this is very underlooked. So serve accuracy is, is a huge one for sabotage. So those four things are the things that we're gonna try. There's a whole bunch of drills that we do, including the drop shot drill, slicing drills. And the, the, weird, the weird thing that happens on, on Wednesday or Thursday when we go to the sabotage thing is we have to almost make a warning to the players that hey, no one's gonna be done this morning in our drill session and walking around here feeling like they played great. It's actually a day where a lot of people get bummed out and they feel like they're playing like crap. But that's the whole point. That's how good sabotage tactics are. Now we see day in, day out, people kind of having little light bulb moments where they kind of buy in. They're like, wow, I really wouldn't want to do this. But now I see since you made me do it in a drill, but yeah, when I do a drop shot, it just kills the guy. Okay, so they're so effective where you can actually do them that they actually, we have to warn the kids, hey, listen, if you're receiving all this junk, uh, you're not, probably not going to play your best. Okay, so I wanted you to get an idea of at least one of the drills we do on Sabotage Day, which is Wednesday. Remember, this is all about lowering the opponent's skill level. And you'll notice that I mentioned that drop shot is one of my personal favorites because it works against so many people. Drop shot is a tough shot to put into an actual drill, but look at how we've done that. All right, players ready? Let's just play it out. Go. There's the drop, and then you play it out. If they hit that drop shot well enough, they're probably, okay, now stop. That's just the first ball. Now all four players are at the base, or I'm sorry, the net, and we play a volley point. And then the third ball, overhead, we're gonna reverse split step, and then you play it out. Nice point, nice. Now rotate one spot around. Matt comes to the iron deck. This position where Donut I'm gonna feed is the drop shot position, go. There's the drop shot. And they may not get it, but Coach Marty's there with a nice angle. Volley point. This is ball two. Overhead, back, back, back. My side defend, split step, play it out. Oh, nice. Okay, rotate, reset. Every point that you win in this game, regardless of who your partner is, is worth one. Okay, play it out. A little too much juice on that dropper. Nice. Okay, here's the volley point. Okay, here's the overhead point, defense. Okay, that's too good, rotate. We're gonna do one more, then we're gonna summarize what we're up to. Okay, ready? Drop shot for Cal. Oh yeah, but Matt's there with a great jump on it. Volley point. And overhead point. Okay, good. So guys, let's huddle up for a second. Um, now, there's lots of things going on in that game. Um, if we take it shot by shot, the first shot is the drop shot. So we're making the assumption that the player actually has the, a drop shot. They're not learning it, but they're actually having, they're training it. Uh, that's the first thing. We want the drop shot to be high enough where the peak's on that side, and it's bouncing ideally two times in this, uh, inside the service box, which may or may not happen, but that's the goal. So that's shot number one. You'll notice that after shot number one, we train the players to sneak in because one of the things that happens when you drop is you're vulnerable to another drop. So by sneaking in, getting to the net, you protect that. That leads us to point number two where it's all four at the net. And what we're looking for there is impressive versus uh, effective. I'm sorry, effective versus impressive. What I mean by that is a lot of kids and they get in a volley situation will just try to hit really hard. It looks impressive, but it's yielding a volley that's too high for the other side. So they're getting all these easy volleys. It's better to hit something that might not look so good, but drops low by their feet. And that's way more effective. And that's what we want. And then on the third ball, we throw it up and we teach a specific move that we call the reverse split step, that, something like that, where the player stops and they give themselves a fighting chance. So that's just one drill and all the little pieces to it. Sabotage day. Okay, so there you got a little bit of a look at the drop shot game. We really like that game because it encourages players to add the drop shot to the arsenal. This is a classic piece of sabotage, which you want them to be able to do so they can lower their opponent's level. So that's a clue of what we do on Wednesday for Sabotage Day. Now the next video you're gonna see in this series is what we do on Thursday. And Thursday has a theme of core drills. And it's just kind of, we're getting near the end of the week. It's kind of fun, let the kids kind of pick their partners for a lot of these core drills. So our next video, you'll see what that's like.